For the longest time, people always have been asking about a tier list video from me since I do rate character differently than a lot of other content creators. So that's what this video is going to be about today. But before we start, I have to say this. That is, please respect the opinion of other people. Some people might have a different opinion than you, and that's fine. And this is going to be every single one, including myself who is presenting the tier list and the people in the comment. That is because tier list video in general are very, very controversial since they are heavily driven by opinion. But then there will always be people who don't respect other opinion. So inevitably, in the comment, there's going to be a war. It's like, wow, this guy rated his character so low, he's so stupid. And then someone will reply that and be like, oh my god, you are the one who's stupid. If you really think that character is good, whatever. Please try not to do that. Please, please respect the opinion of other people. With that being said, of course, don't forget to subscribe and cheat and let's get started. Okay, but... Okay, so for before we start though, like... Um, the way I rate characters is based on value, right? Because the number one most important thing when it comes to Gen Genshin Impact, which is a gacha game, is like how likely am I to recommend someone to pull for their characters, right? So like if you go hit F3 and it's like on a scale of 1 to 5, how likely would I recommend someone to pull this character? So I think the most important factors of a Genshin tier list is values. Because I think like when new players let's say you're a new player and a free to play player and the light spenders and you look at tier list you want to think oh what should i spend my primo on so that's why value is the most important thing uh value is not a direct indicator of power level but power level is a side effect of value right so stronger character will have more value while weaker character will have less value but that's not the only defining factors so the only thing we're going to include is a five star character here Okay, so we can go from uh, left to right. We can go from left to right. Uh, Kazu is four or five. Uh, actually, I should probably talk about how these ratings are. So five out of five is like a must pull, and one out of five is like not a very good pull. And then, in general, three out of five is the best rating for a character. 3 out of 5 is the best possible rating for a character, or not the best possible rating, but it's the care, uh, it's the rating that you should be looking for because 3 out of 5 indicate that this character is very, very balanced, very, very good. I, I, I mean, they're very, very good, but they're not super OP that you feel pressure to pull, right? So let's suppose, let's suppose Ember is a 3 out of 5 character. That means that you don't have to pull even if you're a meta player because Ember is no, not so strong that, oh, it's like, I'm saving for a ball, but Ember is so strong that I need to pull it. No, that's not the case. 3 out of 5 characters, like, they're fine. You can skip them, it's fine, whatever. But at the same time, 3 out of 5 characters are, like, strong enough so that you don't have to feel bad about spending a primo on them. For example, let's say Barbara is really, really weak, and you really, really like Barbara, right? And then, like, damn, I sh really should save my primo for stronger characters. I really need to clear the abyss. But I really, really like Barbara, but too bad she sucks. I cannot afford to pull her. And that's, again, it's a bad thing. So so there's bad reason for being at the top, and there's bad reason for being at the bottom. So that's why, like, being 3 out of 5 is, like, the the best rating you can have. It's like, huh, if you like these characters, they're going to do really, really well, so you can pull for them. And, of course, if you don't like them, then there's no pressure to pull for them at all, because it's not a meta-defining character. Anyway, starting off with Kazu and 4 out of 5. Uh, Kazu is really good. Kazu is like really suitable for a lot of teams. You can play him in a pyro team. You can play him in a freeze team. Oh, not that one. Freeze team. Kazu is really, really universal overall, being like a, a Nemo buffer. The reason why Kazu is not 5 out of 5. It's because the biggest value that Kaza do is he give you damage. And damage is not a strict requirement to clear the abyss. Once you have enough damage to beat the chamber, you already have enough damage. So getting more damage is not necessarily a good benefit. Right? And of course, if you don't have enough damage, he can get you that little bit of damage. In in general, damage is not a uh, damage should never be a factor. 
to push character up because you can get damage somewhere else, right? Like if you don't have enough damage, you can just include Bennett as a support to get more damage. You could try to get better auto fight. Uh, so that's why damage is not a big factor. But overall, Kaza, very, very universal, very, very good CC. Team double buffing our class Sucrose, uh, one of the best characters to have right now. Just fall short of being a must pull since he doesn't provide as much utility as the others. Uh, going left to right, we have Zhong Li, which I put him at a 4.5. I think pretty common people think Zhong Li is 5 out of 5, and that's not wrong. Zhong Li is one of the most universal characters right now as a defensive option. Zhong Li have massive defensive option, and it's really, really good when you need it, especially for boss event. When boss event where you take a lot of damage, Getting huge defensive option is really good. Uh, the problem is, def again, defense option is only one that you need when you need it. If you are beating the chamber so fast that you don't care about defensive option, if you're a god gamer that you don't care about defensive option, then only bring absolutely no value to your party. Right? So if I go to the abyss right now, for example... Oh my god, where is it? Where's our base? Look at my 36 star by the way. 36 star, any 36 star gamer. Yeah. Like, like let's suppose you are falling short of killing the abyss by like say 10 seconds. So you need to push more damage. In that case, the defensive option from Zhongli is not what you need. You don't need more defensive option when you're failing because of the timer. You need more offensive option. So for example, you can play like... Let, let's just say the 4-star national team. And then on the other side, maybe you play like... Uh, Morgana. <clears throat> like you play Morgana. And then, where's a... Uh, then you have no slot to put in uh, Zhongli as all. Zhongli doesn't do anything here at all and it's not suitable to put in because you're looking for more damage. Even if you're playing anything else, it's like, uh, let's say you gave Hotel, oh, let's say you put Chao here instead. And it's like, oh, I'm beating the chamber a bit short, I need more damage, you could just put like, Venti Kazuya. So again, Zhongli is, you could put Zhongli as a defensive option, but ultimately defense is not the one you need to beat the chamber. So that's why Zhongli is not too good, but of course, if you do need defensive option, or like you don't need offensive option anymore, Zhongli is super hot because Zhongli have so much defense value that he just make your run very very comfy. Ganyu is uh, I I've been thinking if Ganyu should be a five out of five, but I think damage should never be a factor that push character like so high. So Ganyu is four point five, or it, it's like here. Ganyu string is not damage though. Ganyu string is being very very universal. Ganyu have infinite range. And um Ganyu like Ganyu is the only character in the game who basically just work with every single thing. And there's almost never a counter for Ganyu. The the only way to make Ganyu not good is like you have to explicitly try to counter Ganyu to make Ganyu not good, which we kind of see in like Vagabond event, like minus cryo, minus charge attack damage. But even then, even when you put all this restriction on Ganyu, people still bring Ganyu. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. Because Ganyu, the, the string of Ganyu is Ganyu just work in every single scenario. There's not a single scenario so far that you say, oh, Ganyu is not that good. And you, maybe you say, ah, in the current Abyss, Ganyu is not that good. But Ganyu is still really, really good, right? You have range advantage, you have AOE, which is what this is a business. It's like, if you need AOE, Ganyu got it. And maybe people say, ah, oh, Ganyu is not as good as the Mako Genki, but you can still use Ganyu really well. You can just play like Melt Ganyu instead of Freeze Ganyu, and then you can fight against the Mako Genki. Ganyu having like multiple playstyle aka melts and freeze is like one of the 
selling point of being universal and then like Ganyu attack is unconditional. There's no condition on Ganyu damage output. So like any kind of debuff doesn't really hurt Ganyu. Like let's suppose this energy debuff was really bad that it just drained all your energy. Ganyu don't care because Ganyu have unconditional attack. Last of it, slowing water, Ganyu don't care because Ganyu attack is unconditional on her charge attack, right? So Ganyu just don't care. There's there's not a single scenario where Ganyu is not good in. So that's why she's good. It's not because she does a lot of damage. It's simply because she's universal. Uh, Jean is uh, Jean is three out of five. Jean is like, Jean is a pretty fair and standard balanced character. There's actually not a lot to say about Jean. Jean is just a really really good healer that fit into any team. Um, the one of the reasons why Jean is really good. Oh, oops. One of the reasons why Jean is really good is because her elemental burst is the one of the only well, it's the only one in the game that heal your entire party, right? So it, it regenerate a large amount of HP for all party member. Jean, Jean elemental burst is the only one in the game that heal your entire party, except well, Barbara. Where is she? I don't know where is she. Barbara also does it, but Barbara is not a good character, so bye. But yeah, like, so Jean is the only character that doesn't take fuel time when you're healing. And Jean being a Nemo also mean like, she's really, really easy to slot into many party. And Jean have an 80 energy cost, but it's not that big of a deal because she refund 20% of it. And then now you have a, uh, you can run ER weapon like Fav, or you can just run the new weapon like Kageuchi. So ER issues is fine. And of course, there's also the fall damage abuse right when when the fall damage abuse work jean can dish out like really good amount of damage overall jean is just the best support in the game like just very very universal very easy to slap into any team and he does it really or she does it really really well so that's pretty much it but of course like jean is not like like again like jean is not game breaking right like if you are failing a bit because of timers jean is not like gonna be the Defining reason. So, Mona is still a five, by the way. Mona is still a five, just because she doesn't work in team that are not Ganyu or Ayaka. the The only team Mona belong in is Morgana. Or now that you have Ayaka, it's just a uh, Morgana. More. I don't know what people. What do people call the team with Morgana? With a uh, with Ayaka, whatever that team is. The Morgana team with Aka is like the only two team that Mona can still it, uh, feed in. You guys have to remember like this team is about or this tier list is about value. So like, like when you're a new player and you got Mona, the next question you have to ask is like, what can you do with that Mona? The answer is nothing. The answer is nothing. If you're a new player, or you're a free to play player, or you're a dolphin player, you roll the Mona, and you're like, now what? Now what? There's nothing you can do with that Mona, unless you have Ganyu or Ayaka. So, so Mona is just not valuable. It's too conditional on you having these characters. It's not good enough to, to justify like being higher. It's not like Mona is bad, that's why she's a 2 out of 5, unlike here. Like 2 out of 5 mean like these characters in general have lesser value, so they are harder to justify for pulling, but it doesn't mean they're so bad that they, you don't ever pull for them. They're, they're just like, they just have lesser value in general. Aka, easy, 3 out of 5, pretty standard, pretty fair character. Like, the, Aka is like the definition of pretty balanced, right? Like, Aka is really, really good, but she's not so good that, like, you have to spend your pre-will for her. Not bad at defining characters. But I'll, I'll be honest, I... Oops. I've been thinking to put Aka, like, higher. I've been thinking to put Aka, like, 3.5, just because... Aka 
like like I mentioned this before, but Ayaka have a lot better team and artifact than Zhao and Hu Tao, or like basically any of her competitor that are like Ganyu. You can use Blizzard Strayer, you can use Morgana, which is you can just use Venti or Kazuya with Ayaka. Uh, even more important is that you can fit Ayaka into as a sub DPS. Like people been trying to put Ayaka and Hu Tao together as a dual DPS comp because Ayaka doesn't take few time. Ayaka, you just press Q, press Y, and you leave. So you can, in theory, put Ayaka into other team as well, like Hu Tao, and it actually work. It actually work. It's not like cope. But but three out of five is good enough, I think. For three out of five is considerable, but um, not like a dramatic difference for now. It's like so. These are the definition of good three out of five, right? If you like Ayaka, three out of five mean like this character is pretty good to perform in or in performance, so you can pull for her like easy. But if you don't like Ayaka, like who cares? If you don't like Ayaka, she's not game breaking. So you don't need to pull for her. So these are, this is why she's 3 out of 5, and this is why 3 out of 5 is a good thing, right? Like 3 out of 5 is a perfect definition. Next up we have, who is next? Hu Tao! Uh, similar reason as Ayaka, basically pretty balanced. N nothing much to say, like really really good single target damage, but obviously she doesn't have AoE, or doesn't, it's not that she doesn't have AoE, but she doesn't have as good AoE. Although, like, maybe, I, I've been thinking if I should lower Pyro DPS, just because Xiangling is too insane. Like, like why would you ever roll for any Pyro DPS when Xiangling exists, right? So because of that, like, in terms of value, Pyro DPS are lower. But otherwise, like, I think 3 out of 5 is fine for, for the time being. 3 out of 5 is like, like, she's not weak. So like if you pull for her then like she's good. So just it's just shining it's better. Hmm. Who's the next? I'm only doing five stars by the way. Yeah, I'm only doing five stars because five stars are the only one where value will really matter. V Venti easy here. Venti are. It's it's hard to say. Venti value have been going down because of the industry a bit. So I've been thinking if I should drop Venti down. But for now, I think he's still 5 out of 5. Um, the thing about Venti is like... He, it's true that he doesn't work all the time. So because of that, he's not a must. But when he does work, he's always... Not only he's the best option, but he demolishes it. Like for example, you guys remember about the... Uh, the Never Ending Night event? Let me... Oh, this is incognito, right? Oh, this is not incognito. Shoot. Whatever. You guys remember the uh, Never Ending Light event? The thing is like... That's like a Venti difference. Either you have Venti, or you don't have Venti. So that's the scenario where having Venti is a game changer. Having Ganyu is not a game changer. Having Zhongli is not a game changer. But having Venti is a full game changer for stuff like that. Right. So. But, yeah, like, like people keep saying Morgana don't work in the current Abyss because you can't pull them. But I literally showed you many times, I just used Morgana through the entire way anyway. And Morgana is still one of the best team for this Abyss. It's still the number one team, number two team actually, on, on this side here. Even though Venti cannot pull it, just because of the utility. So, overall, like, Really, really, the the character that closest to the must pull is uh Venti. Um, and then we have Eula. Eula is. I I really want to put Eula at two point five, but I think three out of five is fair enough. Three out of five is like, like she's not that bad that she's two out of five. She she performed pretty well. It's just that at low investment, she doesn't perform well. You don't take high investment. You don't really take high investment to do. Yula, the problem with Yula is like for 
low investment player, she doesn't perform well at all. But for high investment player period, she performed really well. She's not consistent. Yeah, her her biggest downside is she's not consistent as anything else. But not being consistent is not uh the worst thing in the world actually. Because she needs to reset. Like like I've been thinking about this, but building you what you could do is you could build 30% crit rate on Eula and you just reset, 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 reset until you hit the crit. Is that a good way to play Eula? Or Genshin Impact? No. Is it a good way to play Eula? Maybe. But it's possible. It is possible to just reset, 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 reset until it go your way. It's fine. Eula is 3 out of 5. Like, pretty, she's pretty balanced. She's not that weak. She, she's fine. She's not like a weak character. But obviously not stronger. Mm. Who else is next? Kerchin? Kerchin is here. Kerchin is here pretty self explanatory. Like, charge attack sucks. Stamina sucks. Electro reaction sucks. Kerchin just sucks. The end. Like, there's nothing to say about this. Ripperoni Kerchin mains. Uh, Shao's here. Shao being- it, it's like the same again, right? For- for- like all the 3 out of 5 is the same. Like they're not so strong that they are higher, but they're not weak that they're under. So like, it's like Shao is king of AoE. Shao's really really good. You don't have to pull for Shao if you don't like Shao, but if you do like Shao, then he's gonna do pretty well. So 3 out of 5, pretty- pretty standard. 3 out of 5 is like pretty standard. Klee is 2.5, uh, because unlike the others, Klee, Klee, Klee just 4 shot of 3.5, or 3, 3, simply because she is too clunky and, uh, have a lot of, of issues. Like, it's like, like, Klee can dish out damage similar to the 3 tiers, but Klee have issues similar to Kerchin, which is in the 2 tiers. So because of that, she's in the middle. The, the problem with Klee is, like, even when you play super well, even if you play really really well on Klee, and even if you fix her issues, her damage is still not as good as the uh, the other characters. But her damage is good enough. Like her damage is pretty close, or equivalent, except, except she has a lot more issues, so that's why she's here. I don't think Klee is as bad as these two, so this is my five. Fuck this one. Alright, go next. Albedo is still all five. Mm. Yeah, Albedo is still all five. 2.5 is not. Um, but Albedo only fit Geo team. The the only team where you bring Albedo is Geo team. At best, you bring him with Zhongli. Oh shoot! Oh wait, we're back. Albedo is like only good in Geo team, right? Like you pair him with or with Noah or Ningguang or something like that. And uh, well, like, like Zhongli Albedo. The problem with Albedo is the afterthought. You, you never, you never go to Abyss and then be like, let me bring Albedo because he's so good. You bring Albedo for the one reason only. You bring Albedo for one reason only and never any other reason. And that is, you have nothing else to bring. The only reason you bring Albedo is because you have nothing else to bring. And is he good? Yes, but is he like worth Spending two hundred dollars for, for on not really. That's why it's still at five. Like, like you guys have to remember, like, people spend two hundred dollars for these. On a scale of one to five, how likely would I recommend spending two hundred dollars on Albedo? It's not very likely. That's basically what two out of five mean exactly. It's like he's good if you have him, but if you don't, then like honestly. There's a lot more better character that you can spend your money on. Or Primo. Uh you guys have to know like people commonly pair Zhongli and Albedo, right? Oh I'm gonna use Ningguang, because Ningguang and Ningguang is just as good. People commonly pair Albedo and Zhongli, but that's exactly what's an afterthought mean. It's like like uh, people only bring Albedo in Xiao and Hotel team because they have nothing else to bring. And they're bringing Zhongli 
So you might as well get double Geo. Like, it's literally like, you might as well as bring Albedo just because nothing else to bring. But you can also bring... Instead of bringing Albedo to make double Geo, you can just bring this by the way. You can just bring this instead of trying to roll for Albedo. So he, he's honestly not a good roll. That's, that's why he's 2 out of 5. Uh, what else do we have? Child... Like, I... It's the same reason for Chayo. Uh, but... It's... I think because Chaling is free, and... Chaling team is so OP now, that he can be a 2 out of 5. He, you guys have to understand, like... Again, the problem is people spend $200 or their money or their hard-earned primo on these. And... It's not really... Worth it. It isn't... Albedo, oh sorry, Chao is not a $200 upgrade from Xinqiu. And Xinqiu is the 4 star characters. Like, everyone always talk about how Chao have really good AoE, so wouldn't he be a lot better? But if you take a look, uh, here is Xiangling, Ben, and Xinqiu Sucrose. And here is Xiangling, Ben, and Chao Sucrose. So like, um, Chao is only a 10%, maybe 15% increase from seeing shoes, which is great, but is it great to spend $200 on? Is it a good idea to spend $200 for like a 15% increase over a seeing shoe that you already have? To me, it's not that great. The biggest reason why Chao is good it's not because he's actually good. The biggest reason why Chao is good is so that you don't have to use Sing Chiu's. That's the only reason. I'll be honest. It's so that you don't have to use Sing Chiu's and you can use Sing Chiu of Hu Tao. That's like the only... That's the biggest reason why Chao is good. Because there's only two Hydro characters in the game. But otherwise, like... Yeah, he's better than Sing Chiu's. But he's not so much better that I would recommend someone to pull for. Plus, the, the only team, the, realistically, the only team where Chao is good in is Xiangling. Like, like Xiangling Chao is the only team where Chao is good in. But it's so good that it carries itself anyway. It's not good in Beidou anymore because Sucrose exists. Sucrose is better with Beidou now, so like, you don't you don't run Chao Beidou anymore. You run Sucrose Beidou. So there's exactly one single team where Chao is usable in. It just happened that that team is so so good, and that team is very free to play friendly because Shanling is free. If, if Shanling wasn't free, Chao was for sure be two out of five. But Shanling is a free character, and Chao Shanling is one of the strongest team in the game. And Singshu is so valuable for other characters that Chao end up being here. Like he's honestly in my book not that good. Like for your money, as in you guys have to remember again. You guys have to remember again, like, these, th my tier list is based on value. It's like, how likely would I recommend someone to spend money for that character, right? So spending $200 for a child over a sick juice is not worth it in my opinion. We, we, we use $200 as a, I think $200 is like above average for 5 star characters. So that's, that's the value we use. The Luke! I don't really know if he's 2.5 or 3. I think 3 is fine for now. I think Daluk arguably could be dropped to 2.5. But 3 is fine. Like, once again... Uh... Why is Jean 3.5? Uh, you can just watch the VOD. I, I can... You can just watch the VOD and explain it like... But, I'll explain it again later. But like... The Luke is not super good, but he's not bad either. The Luke is still the most consistent damage dealer in the game. The Luke is still the number one most consistent damage dealer in the game, and he has pretty good AoE. Like again, I showed you guys this before, but when you watch Chinese the Luke player, when you when you watch Chinese the Luke player, they use their AoE and their stagger really really well. So the Luke. And there's Dragon Strike, but we don't usually talk about Dragon Strike as a factor. 
Overall, the Luke is like starting to drop out of value, so that's why he might be moved to 2.5. But for now, I think 3 out of 5 is fine. Like, if someone get it the Luke, I think they'd be pretty happy. In fact, I think for lesser skill player, I still think the Luke is better than every other DPS here. For for new player or lesser skill player, I think the Luke is still perform better than every other character here, just because he's consistent. Hu Tao, like a lot of people think Hu Tao does like 10 times more damage than the Luke, but she does not. Mathematically speaking, the Luke and Hu Tao have very similar damage. Mathematically speaking, Hu Tao and the Luke have very similar damage. The reason why Hu Tao is better is because her constellation and her weapon, aka Staff of Homa, is a lot better. But when you have neither, when you don't have Staff of Homa and you don't have constellation, Hu Tao is honestly just the same as the Luke. So it's it's like people will keep thinking the Luke is like or people keep thinking that Hu Tao is like 10 times higher damage than the Luke. But it's not. That's not the case. Just check the mathematic. Check the math. Uh who the else do we have? You one out of five Yomi, eh? Yomi is two out of five again, so it's like like the part of me wanted to put Yomi in 1 out of 5 because there there is a reason to roll for Albedo, you know, like, you know, you can pair double Geo team, you can, he, he's still useful. Similarly, like, Mona, you can put Mona in Morgana team, you can put Mona in Ga Ayaka team. There's absolutely zero reason to ever roll for Yomi, as I've explained it. There's absolutely zero reason to ever roll for Yomi. Not because she's bad. Like, Chi Chi is here because she's bad, so you don't roll for her. Yomi is not actually bad, so that's why I think she could be 2 out of 5. I think mean, 2 out of 5 is fine. Yomi is not so bad that she is like, you should never roll for her. But in terms of value, in terms of stacking her, like, for instead of spending your money on, Yomi should be a character that you never spend your money on, strictly speaking. So that's why she's. Approaching 1 out of 5 because 1 out of 5 mean like you should not 1 out of 5 mean you shouldn't spend your money on that because it's not valuable to do so But I guess 2 out of 5 is fine 2 out of 5 because at the end of the day Yomiya herself is not that bad Yomiya herself is not that bad what make Yomiya not valuable is simply because everything else is way more valuable than Yomi is so uh, Is that it? Is that it? Am I missing anything? Kazuo 2.0 Is that everything? Oh yeah, also, in case this is not clear to anyone... Always... Well, I don't- I shouldn't say always because- But always roll for, uh... What you call it? Roll for what you want first. Listen to your heart. If you really want Yomi in because you like her voice actor, like, go for it, right? Like, your- Your absolute favorite should be at the top. Your, your favorite character should be at the top. I'm not saying... She's my favorite, but I'm just saying, I'm just using her as a placeholder. I'm just using her as a placeholder, but you should always roll for your favorite character first, and then you can go for the tier list. It's like, oh, which character is the most bang, bang for my primo, bang for my bucks or something, which is basically what this is based on. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment, and this same tier list can be seen in my Discord. So please come join my Discord, and uh, of course don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.